Abraham. Um, we're going to be looking at this from an alchemical perspective, as well as an astrotheological, um, biochemical, and understanding it from uh, a perspective that allows us to see the truth um, about where we come from. So in the Eastern traditions, um, they are very in touch with the ability to communicate with uh, what they would call like the divine mother or the divine father. Uh, in the West, we're prescribed more of a masculine only, uh, you know, only to have like an inner father principle. Uh, but, you know, the, the idea is that in the East, they have them as like uh, archetypal gods and goddesses. But in the West, we have them as in the story as humans on the sense plane. So like we have Abraham, it's a story of uh, supposedly a man who is blessed to have, you know, lots of offspring and promised by God, various things through covenants. And essentially um, just because this is taking on the sense plane and seems to be history, what it's really talking about is the light, the realm of light. So we're going to be discussing how Abraham dwelt in the city of Or and was told by God to get out from his kindred's house and to leave that land. Um, and he goes um, from that land because he's promised that he's going to have children offspring because his wife, Sarah, who in this story represents the divine mother or the divine matter energy, the divine consciousness or the emotions. Uh, she is on, she's barren and unable to uh, reproduce at this moment. So he's instructed by this uh, invisible father presence, the inner God within and told to, you know, go out from that city and he will inherit lands and nations. And he's put to the test through various initiations um, comes to the point where he's unable to have offspring and ends up. Uh, she tells him to go on to her, her handmaid Hagar, which is uh, considered her handmaid or her, her mistress is Sarah. So Hagar, uh, conceives with Abraham because you couldn't have a kid with Sarah. She represents the spirit. There's always the sexual connotation because the mysteries are very sexual. They have to do with the transmutation and the perfection of the soul. So I'm just giving an overlay of the story. So when we get into the presentation, we can kind of understand where all these characters play about and feel free to ask any questions, chime in at any time, always, you know, here to good time to interact. So let's utilize it. So, <clears throat> Um, Abraham's put to the test in various ways and um, pretty soon he is able to conceive Isaac with uh, Sarah um, and it's a miracle um, and their names are changed and they're added an H to it which is a symbol of the initiation that takes place within the soul within us and Isaac is then of course there's another sacrifice where you know they're taken to the mountain and isaac is said you know god says hey abraham you're gonna have to sacrifice your son prove yourself and isaac goes up and you know what they both agree to it they go up to the mountain and instead of isaac being sacrificed god steps in and says hey i was just testing you um and go ahead and just there's the lamb they sacrifice the lamb so we have another mystery of golagotha taking place we have the story taking place um, it's very similar to the sacrifice uh, the crucifixion and we know that Aries is ruled by the brain. So let's get into it. So Abraham represents the individual spirit, the brain and Sarah, Abraham and Sarah, the Sarah Bram, the Sarah Abraham, also with the Sarah Bellum. We're talking about the mysteries of Aries and Taurus and how the brain and the throat, how the throat is the feminine aspect and produces um, words. And this word is um, infundated or uh, fertilized by the air or the breath. So whenever the air breath comes through our throat chakra and we produce words that we produce the child, the son. So this is like that parental aspect that takes place. And on, on a biochemical level, the story um, kind of explains how this process takes place and, and how you're manifesting and how you're creating with the word, making the word made, made flesh. Uh, so these two aspects are raised of deity, um, Sarah and Abraham, or in the Eastern tradition would be Brahma and Saraswati are always representative of the, the dual aspect of the one deity. So on the tree of life, we have Kether, and Kether splits into Chokman Bana, which would be love and wisdom. So anytime in your life when you have access to 
to this love and wisdom. These principles in our life are always helping to nurture the soul and guide it and put it through tests and initiations throughout every aspect of our life, whether it's in our childhood or adolescence, our adulthood, as we get into old age, we're tested in various different ways. And all of the tests come through the 12 zodiac, the 12 zodiac or the 12 aspects, the 12 archetypes. And these all represent the lands that um, Abraham is to inherit and the seeds that he's promised. And the story is supposed to make you feel a, an emotional change within because you're, you're like, well, Abraham can't conceive a Sarah. And it turns out that, you know, they're hundred years old. And once they do, it's a very shocking aspect. You know, it's a miracle. So then when he's told to sacrifice Isaac on the mountain, um, and he does that, uh, he's revealed. So this is the same story as Moses, the same story as Jesus. And we're going to kind of go into what George W. Carey talked about, Sarah and Abraham, and the importance of why they got that age. Because as you know, Sarah and Abraham are the physical representations of the God and goddess, love and wisdom. And on the sense plane, they're tested, you know, literally speaking. So when they're tested and they perform the different various initiations, their name is changed with the letter H. So they become Abraham. Abraham becomes Sarah. Sarai becomes Sarah. Abraham becomes Abraham. So George W. Carey says, why was letter H added to Sarah and Abraham? Heth or Shet is the eighth letter of the Hebrew alphabet and means a field, something perceived or that can be cultivated in short spiritual perception. In the story of Sarah and Abraham, we find the marvelous truth that the age imposes no limit or barrier to the birth of the incorruptible seed or Peter for it is eternal life. Sarah at the age of 90 is told by an angel that she will give birth to a child. Abraham at the age of 100 receives information that he would be the father of an offspring. Immediately following these revelations, the letter H was added to both names. See 16 in chapter 17 of Genesis for that information. Abraham and Sarah now find Isaac, which in Hebrew means laughter or happiness. Thy seed shall be as the sands of the sea. Unto Abraham his seed was the promise given, and unto thy seed, which is the Christ. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Noah, David, Solomon, Isaiah are not historical characters. Patinus, Pilate, Darius, Pharaoh, Herod are names of ru or ruling offices or functions with not certain individuals. No dates being given to any so-called transaction in the scriptures or to any of Paul's epistles, nor to the Acts of Apostles. Pilate means dart, javelin, a giving up or death. Patinus means sea, the open sea, mar marine. Herod means heroic. Pharaoh means rulership. So essentially, all these characters have to do with the incorruptible seed. And that seed in this case is Isaac. Isaac is joy and laughter. The name, the, the meaning of Isaac is joy and laughter. So when we put together the names, if Abraham represents our individual spirit mm -hmm. and the brain and Sarah, let me just make sure everything is okay on this end. I want to make sure I'm okay. It looks, it sounds good. Awesome. So <clears throat> the brain and Sarah and the throat, we already went through that. They manifest as our individual soul. So these two aspects of the tree of life, wisdom and love, Sarah and Abram manifest the individual soul, mm -hmm. which we have as our individualized consciousness. So essentially, Sarah, Sarah Abram, the cerebrum, being Brahma or Sarah Swati, left and right brain, spirit and soul. Isaac meaning one who laughs or one who rejoices. So when we have Abraham and Sarah together, we produce happiness and joy. Because when we combine the, the masculine spirit and it overcomes the emotional waters and evaporates them, and that seed rises to the brain to be sacrificed on the mountain. Instead of the joy and happiness being sacrificed, um, we're given the lamb, which is the sacrificial lamb, which is the crucifixion in the brain, which allows the purification of the blood. So 